about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our latest live stream for GCSE History. I'm joined as ever by Rocky. Hi Rocky, how are you doing? Hi Duncan, very well thanks, you? Excellent, yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. Um, so, it's good to see some of you joining us this evening for the live stream. Um, and if you are joining us live, you can join in with the activities that we're about to go through in the live chat window. Um, please do. Um, if you're watching on replay, which we know very many more people do over the coming weeks, um, then you can't join in the live chat window, but you might be able to pause the video, have a bit longer on some of the questions, so you can uh, join in in that way. Okay, so we have got more of these plots against Elizabeth tonight. Um, there seem to be a lot of them through this period, don't there? So uh, we're going to find out all about them uh starting now so we'll i'm going to hand over to rocky for our um first activity okay here we go thanks duncan evening everyone hope you're well so this first task is categorized now obviously we're going to look at all three plots so the rodolphi plot frockmorton plot and badminton plot and what you're going to have is a minute to place the relevant information under the correct plot so in the comments for instance during the month uh, during the the minute you might want to put rodolphi equals one two three frockmorton equals four five six babington equals seven eight obviously we've not made it that easy for you <laughs> but make sure you match up the dates and the correct information to the correct plot okay best of luck oh it's the dramatic music this is what we like. Pressure from the outset. It 
You don't have to do it all at once if you know the date, for example, or one of the facts do come in with those. Okay, thank you. We got an answer right at the end there. Um, with a Nitro, Babington Plot, 1586. Um, and then led to the eventual execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. And Kemi with the Rodolfi Plot at number seven, coded letters. And now Grey's coming in. Oh, nice. So we'll uh, we'll go through. We'll have a look at the answers and I'll talk through them. Some of these are correct. Some of these need a, a few, few pointers on. So Rodolfi Plot, 1571. Um, and this is the interesting thing because feeding, uh, linking back to the, the revolt of the Northern Earls, we know that the Pope's excommunication of, of, of England and of Elizabeth hadn't occurred by that point, which is one of the reasons why the Catholics in England weren't motivated to get involved. Once you have the excommunication, I think it arrives by February 1570, the Rodolfi plot comes soon after. So 1571 ties in with uh, the Pope excommunicating Elizabeth, and the plan involves a potential invasion of 10,000 Spanish troops. Philip II tell, um, instructs Duke of Alba to prepare, basically, but nothing comes of it. Um, Frockmorton, 1583, and involves the potential invasion of the Duke of Guise. Now, the Duke of Guise is Mary, Queen of Scots's cousin. If you remember, Mary's mother was Mary of Guise, and the Guise family were, or I, I suppose technically it's Guy, you don't pronounce the S in French, do you? But um, <laughs> the Guise family were the most prestigious family in France. Now, the Duke of Guise also tied into the Babington plot as well. But, you know, depending on, you know, what answers you gave, you could you could be right. But I, I decided to pull it with the Frockmorton plot because there's plenty else that you can associate with the Babington plot. For instance, 1586, which Nitro, you got right, and... You're, you're spot on. Eventually, it leads to the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, because she's implicated in this plot via the coded letters uh, discovered by Francis Walsingham. Um, Francis Walsingham also helps uncover the Frockmorton plot, incidentally, but it doesn't necessarily involve some coded letters. But I see we've got uh, Grey got the uh, Duke of Guy point right. Um, he also got the point right about Babington with 1586 as well as the execution. Yeah, good effort. Very good. Okay, well done, guys. We're going to move on to uh, another quiz now. And this one is called the Conveyor Belt Quiz. You may have seen us do this one before, but if you haven't, just to explain, a minute will pass. There'll be a bit of music. Um, and a number of questions are going to come past on the screen on this conveyor belt. They come pretty fast. So try and spot the questions as they come and give some answers in the live chat window. Um, we'll go through the answers at the end. Now, Rocky being Rocky, some of the questions, there are more than one question in there. So although <laughs> it says there are six <laughs> questions that pass, there are probably slightly more than six, really. Shall we? Uh, let's see how we go. Okay. I'll say they go fast, but if you want to type in one and the answer, you can do two and the answer. Answers, in some cases. <laughs> I like to try and pad out as much detail as possible. Detail's good. Ray's coming with a good answer for question one. I'd say they do come past pretty fast. Not a long time for typing lengthy answers.
those do come by thick and fast don't they well done if you're keeping up with those um oh, nitro's coming with an answer for five shall we go through the answers i wouldn't be surprised if a couple more answers come through on the chat window as i'm going uh gray's giving us a date for mary's execution for instance um we'll go through the answers now let's see how you did but feel free for if you're if you're mid typing mid flow do just send them it's fine i'll keep an eye on them Okay, so here we go with some answers. So I think uh, uh, Gray got this one. Absolutely. Roberto Ridolfi, as well as being an Italian banker, was a spy for the Pope. Very good. Who uncovered the Ridolfi plot and which key English noble was implicated in it? So William Cecil uncovered the plot and the Duke of Norfolk was implicated. So that, and that was incidentally that's the same Duke of Norfolk that was due to marry Mary Queen of Scots prior to the Northern Rebellion, um, and then by that point Elizabeth basically has enough and decides to execute the Duke of Norfolk. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one. Who uncovered the Throckmorton plot and what happened to Francis Throckmorton? Francis Walsingham uncovered it. Throckmorton was tortured and executed after he confessed. There's a disappointing lack of um, exclamation marks on that one, Rocky. There were, <laughs> we had lots of, <laughs> lots of exclamation marks yeah. on the previous one, but anyway. Um, oh, no, I was, I was, I was tired. Although, <laughs> although, mind you, we'll see what the next one brings. The next answer. Oh, I think there might be an exclamation mark. We'll see. Okay. What was the key consequence of the Throckmorton plot? Elizabeth's treatment of Catholics became harsher. 11,000 Catholics were imprisoned. Okay. Five. What happened to Anthony Babington, who wrote letters to Mary, Queen of Scots? I'm afraid he was hanged, drawn and quartered, along with his accomplices, which is a very gruesome way to go. Um, okay, and the last one. Or last ones. How many Babington following the Babington plot? How many priests were executed? Thirty-one, and she was, uh, as Gray said, um, beheaded, executed in fifteen eighty-seven. Okay, so well done. Some good answers there in the live chat window. Um, so some good knowledge. I'm going to hand uh, back to Rocky now for a give me two. Okay. Right, what we're going to do now, now based upon the, the previous two tasks, this is a, a four marker. So obviously in the paper, you'd have a describe two features. But here we've got give uh, me two common features of the Rodolfi, Frockmorton and Babington plot. So this is a little trickier in the sense that you want to try and find what are the commonalities across the three plots. Now, I'm not expecting you to write a full four marker mm -hmm. within, the, uh, within the time. You only get 30 seconds. But any key ideas that come um, to mind, then feel free to put them in the chat. OK, best of luck. Trusty got your bog and goes with you, Rocky. As, as always, as always. I've got my base as well, so... Who chooses the, the music? <laughs> it's a good question. I think it's Johnny. I like it. It's good. It's good music. What do you mean we're playing it live? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, destroy the I illusion. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, it was just a joke. It was just a joke. Of course we're playing. <laughs> uh, any, oh, it is John. Yes. <laughs> John's, oh, there. Well, John's. well done, John. Good selections. Yeah. Oh, Nitro's coming with some answers. Ah, so we've got about... Ah, I like that. So Nitro talks about uh, important people particularly dying. Um, although, however, I've just seen... So you've said Frockmorton is killed, Mary via Babington. Now, Rodolfi actually manages to escape. He's, he stays in Italy, doesn't return to England. Um, but I like, the, like your thinking. And Grey talks about... Um, all are led by Catholic rebels, yeah, and, and have 
particularly with Babington and Frockmorton, the English Catholics are, are complicit. Um, good. Should we have a look at the answers? Mm. So uh, these are not the only answers, but I think these are, are a good way of sort of bringing together the commonalities across all three plots. And, you know, if you've if you've viewed this before, you know that we always put the, the feature in red and then the extra detail in black so you can see how you get the full four marks. So each plot involved the knowledge and approval of the Pope. Um, and this was following his 1570 papal bull excommunicating Elizabeth. So that doesn't go away. So the plot, uh, the Pope rather uh, approves of all three plots and, and is aware of them. And then secondly, each plot involves the planned invasion of England and then obviously the replacement of Elizabeth by Mary. And I've differentiated here with the detail by saying in 1571, Spain's due to invade. And then in 1583 and 86, the plan is for, for France, in particular, the Duke of Guy to lead that invasion. So that's a slightly trickier four marker that you could potentially get. Um, but hopefully that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. OK, we've got a 30 second challenge now. So you've got 30 seconds to answer that question on screen. OK, everyone ready? Typing fingers ready. OK. In 1581, two laws were passed against Catholics to restrict their worship. What were they? Okay, good luck. Get typing. Okay, any ideas? 30 seconds goes ever so fast, doesn't it? To come up with two laws, two restrictions that were brought in um, against Catholics in England. Shall we have a look? So recusants, and do we remember those were people who carried on um, practicing Catholicism, were fined £20. Um, and conversion to Catholicism was considered treason and was therefore punishable by death. Okay. So, so I, I just wanted to quickly say, Duncan, sorry. So hmm. with these, they're, they're, obviously these are laws brought in in between the um, revolts. Now, these are partly consequences of those attempted revolts because Elizabeth gets increasingly frustrated with this Catholic threat. Um, and she's tried using compromise with the religious settlement, tried appeasing Catholics throughout the 1560s, but her patience starts to run out. And I think these some of these points, they're often overlooked, but they're very, very crucial in showing how Elizabeth intensifies her crusade against Catholicism. Yeah. And I guess as well as being a consequence of the uh, of the um, plots, I guess there might, to a certain extent, be, you know, a, a cause of the next one, or at least, a, you know, feed it, you know, because yeah. it's, another, it's another source of... Um, of uh of, of complaint if you like from the english catholics isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely i mean it's all it's almost like a like a a, a true diversion of the cold war this sense of brinkmanship mm -hmm. and you know people reacting and responding um yeah that's a good point it does feed into the next plot yeah okay next one in what year were catholic priests smuggled into england to help with recusancy and this is another one where there's more than one question in our 30-second challenge. In what year was an Act of Parliament passed that made the sheltering of Catholic priests punishable by death? But we only need two two dates here, two years, so it's not a lot of typing in 30 seconds if you know it. OK, good luck. Let's see how you go. Okay, we've got an answer in the chat window. Um, I don't think they can. 
both be <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, Nitro's coming in with 15.58. Um, shall we have a look? Yeah, 15.74 and 15.85. Okay. Um, okay. You want to say anything about that, Rocky? No, just just obviously the... Um... Yes, yeah, so the, the smuggling of the, the Catholic priests obviously occurs a few years after the Northern Rebellion, around, around five years. And obviously the, you've got a delay here, this 11 years before you're seeing the sheltering of Catholic priests made, made punishable by death. But this shows the consistency of um, and the continuation of, of, of Catholic worship. And there's a little bit of procrastination here with Elizabeth, but ultimately it's a, it's a reaction to the fact that the Catholics are not going to give up. Okay, and then we've got what was the name of the law passed in 1585 which barred Mary, Queen of Scots, from the succession if Elizabeth were to be assassinated? I think Rocky will tell us a bit more about that law in 30 seconds, but see if you know the name of it first. Okay, here we go. I'll put you on the spot there, Rocky, to ask you to tell us more about <laughs> that law. But... <laughs> <laughs> Gray's come in with an answer there. It's looking pretty good Ooh. to me. Pretty good. The Act for the Preservation of the Queen's Safety. So, yeah, well done, Gray. Very good. That, um, that's excellent. Yeah, was a bit more uh, information you could tell yeah, us about the, that, Law? Yeah, there was a, a, a second part of that as well, whereby not only... The, I mean, Well, firstly, this is quite interesting because... Obviously, the Privy Council and 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 the, and the Protestant nobility they're they're creating this law because they're thinking like th this is a possibility mm. with the threat of plots. Um, so they're trying to cover their bases to ensure that Mary Queen of Scots has no chance of, of of coming to the throne. There's also a second part of this law whereby if Mary is found complicit in a plot, she would have to be brought to trial have evidence brought against her and found guilty before anything can happen to her, which is exactly what happens following the uncovering of those coded letters with the Babington plot and her execution in 1587. So it's this act in 1585 that allows Elizabeth to essentially execute Mary, although in 1587, it is not something still that she really wanted to do. She felt almost forced into a corner by her privy council. Because mm -hmm. there's still this sense of like killing a, a monarch, even though, you know, that-, that, that Exactly. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, it's the, whole, it's the whole reason why Elizabeth was petrified of doing anything to Mary in, mm. in uh, 1568. Obviously by this point in time, She's been in the country for 18 odd years and is like like we said, have said before, she's this rallying point. And once they have the coded letters, it's almost like a step too far. But once having this law to support their actions really helps uh, legitimise, well, for Protestants anyway, and, and for certain Privy Council members, it legitimises the, the action of killing Mary finally yeah. in 1587. Okay. Right, come back to Rocky now to talk to us. Talk us to a twelve mark question. Yes, yeah, so we got a twelve mark question. Um, explain why Elizabeth continuously experienced plots against her between seventy one and eighty six, and then you've got two stimulus points: the papal bull and Mary Queen of Scots. Now, with answering twelve mark questions, I think these are your best opportunities to get lots of marks because ultimately there's no intro, there's no conclusion. You just clear with free paragraphs. Um, my, again, I always say this, technically in the answers, you do not have to use the stimulus points. It always says you may go beyond, the, uh, you may use the stimulus points. But I think they're there to help you. So basically what we're going to look at is a paragraph on each stimulus point and then look at ways of going beyond um, those to get that third paragraph and guarantee uh, a minimum of nine marks. So nine out of 12, 75%, you're looking at a minimum grade seven there. I say to my students as well, 
You want to think about a minute and a half per mark. So 18 minutes for a 12 mark question, like tops maximum. Um, OK, so let's begin. So obviously one of the stimulus points was the paper ball. So don't be afraid to set context, explain what the paper ball was, why it was important in motivating English Catholics to be part of the plot. And the fact that this excommunication doesn't go away and this papal ball goes away means that English Catholics are consistently able and prepared to be involved in these plots. Because remember, the question is about 71 to 86. So the examiner wants you to make sure that you can come up with reasons that um, support why Mary, uh, sorry, Elizabeth is under threat throughout that time period. And you'll see here with the last bullet point, I've used the knowledge that it is common knowledge, but it's, it's key substantiation to support your points with detail. Francis Throckmorton in 1583 and Babington in 86, they're emboldened by the papal support, they're emboldened by the excommunication, and they are willing English Catholics prepared to, you know, do the worst possible thing to a, to a monarch and uh, commit treason and try and replace her and be complicit in their, uh, her removal and even her death. So, okay. with that, oh, sorry, did you want to say something, Duncan? No, no, we're moving on to the stimulus, paragraph two. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, second paragraph then, Mary, Queen of Scots. Clearly, she doesn't go away, 71 to 86. She's a rallying point, as we've established with the revolt of the Northern Earls. Don't be afraid, Eva, I know the, the question talks about 71 or starts at 71, you don't have to mention the Northern Earls, but you'll still get credit for saying, well, from 1568, she's a rallying point. And then, you know, this intensifies, uh, or rather the failure of the Northern Rebellion intensif intensifies the desire to remove Elizabeth. So therefore, whilst under house arrest, she's a constant rallying point for English Catholics. And she's inspiration for, for Catholic uh, foreign Catholic powers to potentially force the issue and try and put her on the throne instead of Elizabeth, as we've seen with the Frockmorton plot involving the Duke of Guy and the Bamington plot also involving the Duke of Guy, as well as Rodolphe plot involving um, the potential invasion of Spain. But likewise, the marriage of Duke of Norfolk to Mary means that whilst Mary's there, she's seen as a an opportunity or a vehicle to A, replace Elizabeth and B, guarantee you know power and prestige for those that put her on the throne. Um, and likewise, this tying of the Duke of Guy as, as Mary's cousin is prepared consistently to support her in 83 and 86. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that is clear. And then lastly, going beyond the stimulus points, I've got I've got two potential issues that you could focus on. I mean, you could bring them both together in one paragraph or maybe focus on them separately. First thing is that. Catholicism never goes away, and it's one of the reasons why Duncan did those 30-second blasts with you. You could talk about the role of Catholic priests, the promotion of, um, you know, recusancy. You could talk about why Elizabeth feels the need to try and imprison 11,000 Catholics. The fact that it never goes away means that the, the, the key religious motivations behind the plot, therefore, never go away. And so Elizabeth is constantly under threat between 71 and 86. And then also you could talk about the willing foreign support that I slightly drew upon in the previous paragraph. But you could be even clearer here and say Elizabeth is constantly under threat because she's facing um, uh, threats from from Catholic foreign support. And then use the specific examples again to show the examiner by referencing the three plots. Also, you're going across that time period and demonstrating why you know that Elizabeth is constantly under threat. So here you see I've mentioned or referenced Philip II, Duke of Alba and 10,000 men for the Rodolphe plot. And I've mentioned and referenced the Duke of Guy for 1583 and 1586. So hopefully three clear paragraphs, constant focus on the nature of the question and explaining why for that 15 year time frame, Elizabeth is constantly under threat and minimum that will get you nine out of 12. And to be honest, with that range of detail, you'd be looking at, you know, 10, 11, 12 out of 12 there. So grade eight, grade nine. Great stuff. Got one last activity to send you off for your teas. Um, 
some of the key terms and characters we've come across during the uh, session. We're going to look at them, but we have swapped the vowels around to make kind of nonsense words. The consonants are right, but the vowels have changed. Can you spot them? Okay, so good luck with these. Um, I like to try and pronounce them. It's my it gives me a little bit of entertainment <laughs> um, on a Tuesday evening. So apologies for my weird pronunciations, but see if you can work out who this is. Saw Franco's Walsonghom. Nitro has gone. No, from ah, Kimi, Kimi has gone for Sir Francis Walsingham Gray. Gone for that as well. You would be correct. Well done. A few Francis is around, but this one was Walsingham. Okay. Um, and John got that one as well. I'm going to be careful how I pronounce this one. Um, actually, I can't <laughs> think. I can't think of a good way. Um, Deco, Deco of Giazzo. Okay. Um, any ideas? That one. It's funny how sometimes you can just really see what the word was and it almost doesn't make any difference changing the vowels and sometimes it changes it massively. And Kemi again yeah, has yeah. gone there with the Duke of Guise. Grey gone for the Duke of Guise as well. And you are right. Well done, Nitro got it as well. Very good. Ah. I think we may have heard this one earlier, but um, Frinker's Threk Merton. <laughs> you see, as I said, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the uh, the change in the vowels doesn't make a huge, a huge amount of difference, yeah. particularly to the uh, second word there. Yeah, well done, Nitro. Francis Threk Morton. Um, very good. Anthony Babungtun. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Uh, lots of people got Francis Threk Morton. Well done. I am getting Unthuni Babungtun. Trying to make it sound as not like the actual word as possible. Well done, Kemi and Anthony Babington. And Grey got that as well. Very good. John got it. Um, Rebati Redilf. Rebati Redilf. I reckon this is one where people probably know it and they're worrying whether they're going to spell it right or they know the second name. Yes. Yeah, Nitro's That's got the surname Ridolfi. Something Ridolfi. Quite a few people coming in with that. Well done. Yeah. Oh, and well done, Kemi. Yeah, Roberto. Rodolf, Ridolfi. Well done. Okay, so very good. Lots of really good answers in the chat window this evening. You were on fire. Well done, guys. And um, just a quick reminder that we've got lots of study notes and activities and various things that you can do on the TutorG website. If you've got a smart device, you can scan that QR code and uh, see what we've got on there. Um, there are also some resources uh, for sale um, from TutorG, including the excellent, the amazing um, exam buster for the Elizabethan England, written by our very own Rocky. Okay, I'm going to come back to the uh, studio now, I hope. Um, if I find the right button okay there we go and uh, um so that was really good wasn't it some really good good answers there yeah uh, nice work john with the uh missing vowels i like that or the oh, altered uh, vowels racky, racky and Dingon. yeah that was it. <laughs> very good um <laughs> okay so lots of you already have done thank you very much but if you can and if you have enjoyed it please do click the thumbs up button um it helps uh other people find these sessions um similarly if you haven't already do um subscribe to to, to to you on youtube because then you'll find out when next we're going live and it's worth remembering that we do have these for some of your other gcse subjects as well potentially depending on what subjects you do there's a geography sociology business um, i've probably missed some gcse's out there so someone feel free to <laughs> Type into the chat window if I've missed your GCSE yet. Um, um, lots of people saying thank you in the chat window. Thank you. We thank you as well. Um, we're same place, same time, same place next Tuesday. We're carrying on with Elizabeth. We'll see what where we get to next in the story. Do come and join us then. 
Thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone.